Um, so my name is Dylan and I'll be going through this um, introduction to Linux um, using the HPRC portal. So yesterday we talked, uh, we, we did introduction to, to Linux, but we were using MOBA Xterm or basically whatever device um, people had. Um, MOBA Xterm, if you're on Windows today, we're doing Linux, but we're going to be doing Linux through um, the HPRC portal. So everybody here should have, uh, should be able to log into the, the HPRC portal and I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, let me unpause this. Okay, um, and then also helping me in the chat is Brayden. Um, he'll be there to answer. Uh, yeah, please subscribe to our, our YouTube channel, please. Um, Brayden will be here to uh, help answer questions in the chat. So you guys feel free to ask questions. And as I see them pop up over here, I'll try to address them. Uh, but if I'm in the middle of talking or something, and it's a quick question, Brayden can probably join, uh, jump in and get it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. So because we're going to be using the clusters, um, throw this away. Uh, we're going to need to connect to the VPN. So uh, if you haven't already, um, I should have done that. Uh, let me send you the link to the VPN, connect.tanu.edu. Um, oops, there's a capital H. But yeah, so that is the link to uh, the VPN so you can get connected to, to campus Wi-Fi. Um, so uh, yeah, you need the VPN to be able to log into ADA to access the, the shell that we're going to use. So connect to the VPN. Um, your login password. So this is the generic uh, login password warning. Uh, you should be practicing good um, password practices. Uh, so don't write down your passwords. Um, don't choose easy to guess or crack passwords. And uh, remember to change your passwords frequently. Yesterday I talked about how um, I, my iCloud account got hacked or someone, someone managed to get into my iCloud. So I had to update a whole bunch of passwords the other day. So use a password manager. Um, I know I will be in the future. Okay, so accessing the system. Uh, typically, when you access a remote system, you use um, SSH, which is a, a command line utility. It stands for uh, Secure Shell. Um, typically, when it's written out, it's written out like capital like that, like you see right here, capital SSH. But uh, when you're using an actual terminal, you would lowercase it, and it'd be lowercase SSH. Um, it's the only program allowed for remote access. Um, it uses encrypted communication, hence the secure part of the shell. Um, and it's freely available for um, Linux and Unix systems and Mac OS hosts. Uh, on Windows machines, you'd need to download a client. Um, but today, we're going to skip the whole download a client thing, and we're going to um, use it through uh, the web portal. So the HPRC portal, uh, which is right here at this, you can find it at this address, um, HTTPS. Let me copy this, put this in the chat. Um, There we go. Um, so uh, yeah, the, that's the link to the portal. Um, and when you get there, you're gonna log in with your uh, HPRC account, um, which is probably if you have if you have a net ID, uh, it's gonna take you when you try to log in, it's gonna route you through through CAS, the central authentication system, um, and you'll log in there. So I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this link. It's gonna take me to the portal. Um, this is the page you should land on. Um, it'll look like this. And uh, you got two options here. You can either go to Ada or to Terra. Um, today, we're going to be using Ada. Uh, they're both, they both function pretty much the same. Um, the portals, the interfaces of them look the same. Uh, the only difference is going to be like some of the software that's available on either cluster. Um, so for simplicity, we're all going to use Ada today. So um, let's see, back to the slides. Okay, so uh, once you're here, yeah, you just click on, let's keep on doing that, Ada On Demand, and it's gonna take you, okay, so this is this is what CAS looks like, Central Authentication Service. So um, you type in your net ID and your password, and then it should log you in. Um, it might ask you for the Duo prompt, um, so go ahead and authenticate with Duo. And then uh, this is the page it looks like um, once you've successfully logged in. So um, I'll wait here for just a second. Is everybody able to, to log in to, uh, to the portal? To the dashboard right here? Let's see. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, and remember, uh, if you're not connected to the, v to the VPN, uh, I think when you, try to, when you try to go to the portal, um, it will, the connection will just hang. Um, so yeah, so like Braden said, make sure you're there. Okay, so now that everyone's here, um, 
this is what the portal looks like. You could actually do a whole lot of stuff from the portal. Today, since we're just getting started with Linux, we're just gonna um, use a shell. So um, the shells over here in clusters, if you click clusters up this top maroon banner, um, you get three options. You say uh, Ada shell access, Terra shell, or Curry shell. Um, these being our three clusters, Ada, Terra, Curry. Um, so we're just gonna go with Ada because we, we wanna uh, log into Ada. So we're gonna go ahead and click this and it's gonna open a new tab. It's gonna open a new tab looking like this. Um, and this is actually, uh, this ran the SSH command for us through our through our uh, our web browser and this is logging into to Ada. So it's asking for my password right now. So I'm gonna type my password in and you'll notice as I type my password in, um, there's nothing popping up right here in the password area. It's reading my input, but it's not uh, displaying any like asterisks or anything. Um, so, okay, let's put this in there. And then once you get here, you're gonna do the, uh, um, the duo prompt. And that's gonna prompt you for duo. Okay, so it looks like we have one person um, who's not able to get in. Uh, so, oops. Um, so yeah, so, so once you go here, remember you log into the portal, clusters, Ada shell access up here at the top, that'll open a new tab and it'll throw you um, onto this login page. Enter your password. Don't worry if you don't see any input. You're not going to. Um, it's reading your password, and then do the uh, your duo push, and then you'll get logged in right here. Okay, is everybody, um, was everybody able to get into the, uh, onto this page right here? So we've successfully logged in. Okay, are we good to go? I think we had one person um, might help. So um, if that one person needs help, um, throw a message in the chat and we can, uh, we can help you out. Okay. So uh, I'm gonna close this. Um, so yeah, so that button that we just pressed starts an in-browser SSH session. Uh, that is exactly the same as if we had just done, um, I'm, I'm gonna leave this closed actually because I'm gonna be tabbing back and forth. Um, it's the, pressing that button was the exact same thing as using the SSH command. So uh, this is what the SSH command looks like on a Linux client when you type it in from the terminal. You would say SSH and then your NetID at ADA or whatever host you're connecting to. Um, and then you would connect like that. So we skipped all this this whole step and we just ran ran right through the uh, the portal. So a neat little web interface. So let's go ahead and start talking about um, Linux commands. Uh, so Linux commands uh, have options. So um, the first command we're gonna talk about is the, uh, the man command. The man command is the, uh, the manual page. So the way I describe uh, the manual page normally is um, I don't know if I could make this. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay. Make this a little bigger. There we go. Um, the way I normally describe the manual page, the, the, the man command to people is that uh, it's a lot like the manual for your microwave or something. Um, it has a ton of technical information for all the commands that, for most basic commands uh, on Linux. But because it's very technical, it has all the information, even all the information you probably didn't need. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say man ls over here. 
and man ls is going to run the manual command on the ls command. So the ls command, let's find out what it does, man ls. So when we do that, we're, we're taking away from our, 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 um, our prompt, and we're over here now inside a manual, and it says ls, uh, name ls, and then it tells us list directory content. So now we know that the ls command lists the contents of directories, um, and then it gives us a, a bit of a longer description, uh, list information about the files, um, the current directory by default, and then sorts them alphabetically, blah, blah, blah. And then after the little description, we get a whole bunch of uh, flags for it. So that's, a, that's what this slide's talking about right here. We're talking about the, uh, the options. So uh, flags and options in Linux are the exact same thing. And they are these, um, they're these items right here that would go after the command. So to exit this little uh, manual, page and get back to our prompt, we're going to hit Q on our keyboard. So if you hit Q, we're, we were returned here and we see our, our, we're given our prompt back with the little dollar sign ready to go. So let's use the ls command. And now we know that the ls command is going to list the contents of the directory. So when I type ls, let me move this out of the way. Um, when I type ls, I'm given a whole bunch of stuff here. I see desktop, documents, DOS script, downloads, Dylan history, all this good stuff. Um, so back over here, uh, okay, so th this just talks a little bit more about um, man pages. Uh, when we're inside a man page, you can go up and down using your, your arrow keys. Um, and then you could search the man page uh, by using slash. So if I hit slash on my keyboard, um, and I search for all, you can see down here in the bottom left corner, it's uh, I'm typing. So slash all searches the manual page for all instances of all. So right here, um, it highlights it and it shows me, here's the first one, second one, third one. Um, and then you could search, you could go up and down with uh, the arrow keys. So the manual page um, has a ton of great information um, and it, it's available right here from the terminal. Um, although it's probably easier and more straightforward if you're confused about a command um, to, to Google the command because uh, the manual pages, like I said, they can be very technical. Um, and sometimes they, they have very, very um, dry computer science-y uh, descriptions of what the command does. Um, so let's learn some other commands right here. Uh, oh, okay. Actually, we're going to talk about um, finding our way around the Linux uh, directory structure. So uh, in Linux, the system is organized um, exactly like this. At the very top, you have uh, the root directory. Uh, so you've got root, you have uh, temp, etc, and then home, um, and then other directories like var and stuff like that. Um, so generally, um, it's organized as a, as a tree. Um, so if, if you if you've taken a, like a, da a data structures class, um, you'd be familiar like with the with the tree data um, um, data form. So specifically, it's it's like an upside down tree. So at the very top, you've got the root, um, and then all of these top level directories up here. Most of them have uh, configuration files and operating system stuff. So when we connected to the system, um, we were thrown into our home directory. So we could see that. Uh, um, we could see that by going to our terminal right here. Uh, and this little prompt in the bottom left corner, um, this tells us a few things actually. So the first thing it tells us is our user. Um, so the first part of this little uh, prompt says, Dylan, uh, for me, for you, it's gonna say whatever your net ID is or whatever your username is for the system you've logged into. And then you get the, uh, the at sign. Um, and then the at sign, after the at sign, you see the host name. So in this case, it's telling me um, I am currently this shell belongs to Dylan at Ada 8. Um, Ada 8 is the host name of the computer we've logged into. We logged into Ada, um, but Ada has a whole bunch of login nodes because it's a, it's a shared resource, right? So there's a whole bunch of um, login nodes. There, there's actually eight of them, one through eight. Um, and then the last part of this prompt right here, this little, this little squiggly, um, tells us where we are. Um, so in Linux, this little squiggly um, is a shorthand for slash home slash your net ID. Um, so 
for me, that's slash home slash Dylan. For you, that's going to be slash home slash whatever your username is. Um, and that also happens to be, um, I keep on alt tabbing because I, I normally use my terminal. And so I just alt tab between the terminal and uh, Firefox, but that's why I keep on doing that. So um, in our case, uh, whenever you log in, you're thrown in your home directory. So in this example right here, we see uh, the top level home directory holds everyone's homes. Um, on a, and on this little example, um, we have Sarah. Sarah has a home directory. Chris has a home directory. And then inside of Chris's home directory, um, Chris has two folders. One's called docs and one's called uh, scripts. So uh, are there questions over here? Let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, now these other directories like root, temp, Etsy, et cetera, um, and var. Uh, the, the root directory is going to have like operating system stuff. Uh, so this is all going to be, um, we, we probably will never have to go there. Um, it, and certainly in this introductory course, we won't uh, be doing anything in those, in those directories. Um, on a shared resource, like let's say you're logging into a, a high performance cluster somewhere, um, be it ours or, or at some other university or some uh, company's system. Uh, if the system's set up right, you, you probably shouldn't have access to, to any of these directories other than you know, the directories that you have. Um, because all these directories have permissions and stuff like that. So the root directory is going to have uh, operating system files and, and things like that, that that run the operating system. The temp directory is going to have folders that are folders and files that are created by um, either the operating system itself. Um, and these are temporary files. So maybe they get they get written and overwritten and rewritten um, constantly um, by the, either the operating system or the or, or software applications on the system. Um, Etsy is going to have configuration files and stuff like that. And then VAR is going to have um, logs. Uh, this is typically in general, um, is this uh, is not like, uh, it's not like this on every system, but in general, that, that's how it works. So today we're just, we're, we're just focusing on home. Home is where, where we land when we log in. Um, so to confirm where we are, uh, we're going to use this command, PWD. The PWD command stands for print working directory. Um, and so over here in our shell, we're going to, um, I'm going to clear my screen because my screen's kind of cluttered. I've got all this stuff over here that I don't, I don't need. Um, so to clear my screen, you can either do uh, clear and then hit enter, which gives us a nice blank slate to work with, or we can say uh, control L. So if I had a whole bunch of stuff on my screen and then I hit control L, it would clear my screen. Um, whenever I'm working on, in, in, a, in a shell, I like to keep my screen clean so I could um, not be too cluttered. So we're going to run PWD right now. Oops, PWD. And uh, the first thing we notice is that we type the command in uh, and I hit enter, and then we don't get any error at all. Um, we, all we see is, uh, we just see the output for the command. Um, so in Linux, whenever you type a command in, if you type it in successfully, um, you, don't get, um, you don't get a successful output or anything like that, you just, you just get the output. The only time that you'll get um, uh, an, like a, a, an output about the command is if the, is if the command you entered uh, was incorrect. So for example, um, if we were to say PWDS, so let's say we, uh, we had a typo and we were trying to do PWD, but we see PWDS, instead of printing our work directory um, or, or offering us a, a suggestion, um, bash, so bash is this, the shell that we're using. Bash means a born again shell. That, that's kind of the language we're, we're working in right now. Uh, we get this output and it says bash has a message for you. And it says PWDS has a message for you. Uh, and it returned a message saying command not found. So um, anytime you see something like this, that's kind of how you debug it. Uh, this is where the error is coming from. So bash is telling us um, that this command right here had an, an error. And then specifically what error? Um, it was the command not found error. So basically that means that um, the bash shell did not understand what we said. Um, that can happen pretty often if you do something exactly like this, you just kind of mistype uh, what, you're, what you're going for. Um, on other operating systems, you might see uh, the, the shell might suggest to you like, oh, uh, did you mean to type this? Um, and, and offer you a suggestion. Um, in our case right now, it, it just tells us, hey, we didn't understand what you said. Um, so a successful command gives no uh, error and it just, it, it doesn't complain at all. It just does exactly what you asked it. In our case, it tells us where we are. Um, so we ran PWD and we saw that we're in our home 
uh, directory, home slash user net ID. Uh, so now let's go ahead and list the contents again, ls. And so now, now we know um, exactly what's going on here. And we see all the stuff. Uh, yours is probably a lot emptier. This is um, a whole bunch of files and stuff from work. So, okay, so let's talk about some common directory commands. Uh, we're gonna learn three specifically right now. The first one we're gonna learn is uh, mkdir. Uh, mkdir or, or make directory is the command to make a new directory. Um, so a directory in, in Linux is the exact same as a folder. Folder, directory, same thing. Uh, similar to how flags and options are the same thing. Um, you'll hear me jump back and forth between the two. Um, directory, I believe, is the, the, the more official technical term um, if you're if you want to be very technical about it, um, but they're folders. They're just, they're, they're folders that can hold other files or folders. So we're going to say um, mkdir to invoke the command, and then we're going to say mydir. So this command is going to say, make a directory and name it mydir. So we hit enter, and we don't see any complaints at all. Let's type ls again. And right here. Miter. You'll also notice that it's blue. Uh, we'll talk about what these colors mean later, um, but spoiler alert, blue means it's a, it's a folder, it's a directory. So we just made a directory, called, called it Miter, and now it's right there. Um, so to, uh, to move around in Linux, we use the CD command. The CD stands for uh, change directory. Um, it, it just moves you to another directory. So in our case, let's move into the directory we just created. So we're gonna say cd to call the cd command, and then my underscore dir. So again, uh, the terminal doesn't complain at all. It, it, uh, it goes straight into my directory. And then you'll notice over here on our prompt as well, uh, we, we lost this little squiggly line and it was replaced with uh, the name of the directory we're in. Um, so, so this prompt will always tell you three things. It'll tell you who you are, what system you're connected to, and uh, in our case right now, the default configuration is it'll tell us uh, the the last folder we were in, or, or the or the, uh, the bottom. So when we do pwd, it'll tell us this last directory right here. So our our our, our deepest directory. In our case, we're in mydir. So that that's uh, that's a very useful way to to think about the prompt. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and move back to our home directory um, because we're gonna remove the, we, we wanna remove the directory we just created right now. And we're gonna remo remove the directory using rmdir. Um, rmdir removes an empty directory, but it's important to remember that we can't remove a directory that we're, we're currently standing in, quote unquote. I, I'm doing these air quotes right now. Um, so because we're standing in my directory, if we were to say rmdir my dir, it's gonna say, um, just like how we got that error up here from bash, this time it's not a bash error. We're getting an error from rmdir. So rmdir is saying, hey, something happened. And it's saying, uh, what exactly happened? Failed to remove my directory. Uh, why did it fail to remove it? Um, because there's no such file or directory. The reason for that is because it's, it's currently looking inside the directory we're standing in um, for this directory. So it, it's, it, it doesn't exist because if we ls, there's nothing in this directory, it's empty. So let's move back to our home. Um, so to move back to our home, AKA to move up one directory uh, from where we currently standing, we're just gonna say CD again to change directory and then enter. So CD with no arguments at all, just CD itself always takes, takes us back to our home directory. We know that because right here, we see our little squigglies back. And remember the squiggly means uh, slash home slash, it means your home, it means you're in your home directory. Um, and then uh, we can confirm that with PWD. Yeah, home Dylan. Okay, so now if we LS, we can see my dir right there. And we're gonna remove it with rmdir. rmdir my underscore. This time we hit enter. Um, 
there's no complaint from uh, bash or from the command we just ran rmdir so we can assume it ran uh, it, it at least ran successfully it did something now let's see if it did what we wanted to do um, i typed ls to list the contents and yes we see that my dir is no longer here let's check the chat real quick okay Oops. Oh yes, um, CD CD with the with the little squiggly line will also always take you back home. Uh, yeah, because remember the the tilde little squiggly line always means slash home slash home slash uh, your user. So okay, so now we've uh, we've made a directory. We've learned how to change directories, how to move around. And we learned how to uh, remove empty directories. Um, so I, I, sh I should mention um, the rmdir command um, only removes empty directories. So um, if we were to make a directory, so I'm going to remake my dir, and then inside of my dir, I'm going to, uh, you don't have to follow along with this one, I'm just going to show. Uh, I'm going to make um, a file, uh, we'll call it some file. Um, so now, when I list the contents of my directory, I see that my directory exists and it has a file in there, it has a text file in there called some file. So I'm in my home directory. Here's my directory, the one I just created, and I want to delete it, but it's not empty. I'm going to use the rmdir command on it and let's see what happens. So when I say rmdir, uh, RMDIR returns a, a, a message saying, okay, we failed to remove my directory, um, but this time the error is different. It doesn't say we can't find it. It's saying uh, the directory is not empty. So um, RMDIR removes empty directories. If you want to remove um, a directory that has stuff in it, you're going to use the RM command. Um, specifically the RM, th there, there's two ways to do it. You could either, uh, you could move into my directory so now that i'm in my directory i can remove the file that's in here so the file is called um, list the contents the file is called some file so i could rm some file which would remove the file and then i could go back home and use rmdir to remove my directory or if i want to do it in one step from my home directory so cd uh, tilde or cd no argument back to my home i can use rm which is just remove aka delete um minus ri um r is a flag for recursive deletion and i is the flag for prompt me before you delete anything um which is kind of like the uh the safety button for rm and i'm going to say mydir and now it's going to say r this rm command is giving me this it's saying uh descend into directory mydir uh, mydir and i'm going to say yes and it's saying remove regular empty file, uh, some file right here. And I'm going to say yes again. And then it's going to say remove directory my dir. And I'm going to say yes one more time. So in total, three um, three questions. Do you want to move into this directory? Yes. Do you want to delete this file? Yes. Do you want to delete the folder that um, I was just in? Yes. Um, so that's how you delete things, uh, delete folders that have stuff in them. Um, a little bit more dangerous that way, but. Uh, just thought I would mention that because we didn't talk about how to remove a directory with stuff in it. Okay, so let's talk about options now. Um, leaving a space between the command, uh, so you leave a space between the command and the option. So when I ran rm, I ran the rm command and I gave it two options, ri. Uh, we know that these are options because uh, there's a space between the, the command itself, rm, and then these options. And then also because uh, there's this, this dash, it's, it's the dash, it's the minus, um whatever you want to call it so the uh, the terminal interprets this as okay you want to run the arm command and then uh we're going to use these options to modify how the command runs all commands have options um you could read all about them in the manual page for each command um i uh, i do recommend like i said to use uh to use google instead if you want to get you know really uh better um more easy to digest information about the commands and stuff um, so in this case, we're going to be using the ls command, and we're going to look at some of its options. Um, so there's two ways to use flags. The first is how I did it right here with, with uh, 
I'm, I'm going to clear my screen real quick. Um, the first is how I did it right here with one dash. So this one dash right here says um, every character after this dash, I want you to interpret as an individual flag. Um, let's use the, the LS example. So we're going to say LS minus A space L. So this runs the LS command to list contents, and then it uses uh, these two flags, the A flag and the L flag. And the A flag is going to show us uh, hidden files as well. Um, it's going to show us all files. That's that's what it means. Um, and then the L flag is going to show us the uh, it's going to show us details about each file or folder. Um, I, I typically refer to it as the long list format um, because you'll see how how it looks different. So when I hit enter, the output for LS looks a little different now. It looks different because of the the minus L flag. So this is the this is the the long list format. We get uh, the permissions for the file in the first column, uh, the, the, the bytecode, I think, right here for this one. Um, yeah, don't worry about that. And then the, the owner uh, of the file, so in this case, I own it. Um, this is the user, or sorry, this is the user who owns it right here. This is the group who owns it. Um, in, in our cases right here, they'll be the exact same. Um, that's just kind of a, a quirk of how Linux is, uh, Linux is, is made. Um, everybody is, is part of their own user group. This is the size of the file in bytes. Um, so right off the bat, it tells us this bash profile file is 197 bytes. That's not really useful to us because um, we can't, you know, we don't want to do the math in our head. And then this is the last time it was uh, um, modified. So in our case, this file is modified on August 2nd. Um, so that's the, the long list format right here. So this command ls space minus al uh, interpreted, oh, oh, and sorry, the a flag, I forgot to mention that the a flag listed um, all the files like you'll see so this is the regular output of, of lit of ls and this is the the long list you'll notice there's a whole lot more stuff here and that's because the minus a flag is showing us all files including hidden files and hidden files begin with the period so this is a hidden folder called felix and it starts with the period so that's why um, we couldn't see it before but now we can see it with the a flag um, so back to options uh, what we're getting at here is that um, if you use a double dash, the double dash means um, this is a single option, uh, which typically uh, in, in Linux best practice, uh, whenever you, you use a double dash, um, you're using, you're going to use an entire word to describe. So ls double dash all is the same as saying ls dash single dash a. Um, they're, they're, they do the same thing. They just have two names because one is longer and more descriptive and one is short and, and the shorthand for it. Um, you can stack multiple, um, you can stack multiple options behind a single dash like I did. So I did LS space minus AL, um, or you could, uh, put one dash per, uh, per character that works too. So this command and this command right here, the middle command, and the bottom command will execute the exact same way. They'll have the exact same output. Um, it's just the bottom one's a little easier to type. Um, the top one will execute the same as if you said ls minus a. It's just more descriptive, and uh, when you're when you're getting started um, using Linux, it's probably easier to use the more descriptive flags. Um, that's how I learned when I was learning uh, a while back. I, I would always use the longer descriptive flags because I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but as you as you get more familiar with it, you'll start to uh, you'll start to uh, become more comfortable and be able to, to shorthand it a whole lot. Um, so that, that's typically how Linux goes. Um, so, okay, so I promised we talk about um, attributes and, and why the, the items had different colors. So this is the slide on that. Um, file and directory names are colored. So when we typed ls or even uh, ls minus al and, and did all that fun stuff, um, we saw a whole bunch of different colors um, in the, the output. So um, they're colored based on their attributes such as permissions and extensions. Typically it, it's the permissions that, that, that do it. So at the very top in my directory, I didn't have any um, any of these turquoise um, turquoise uh, items. Uh, turquoise uh, implies that it's a it's a symbolic link. So it, it's it's basically a reference to another uh, location. Um, in this case, this AAF turquoise AAF is a reference to this file. Um, it's a reference to the AAF.py, um, which we see right here. And AAF.py is green. And the green implies that this is a file that is executable. So we could tell the computer to, to execute it, to run it. Um, 
and then the the depending on what interpreter we tell it to run it with in this case the dot pi extension implies that we would we would uh, execute this with with python um but uh yeah so files have to be made um executable before you can run them so if it's executable it's going to be green um the same thing with aaf underscore dot tip uh yeah underscore tip dot pi it's going to be a green executable red means it's a compressed file um and then the extension here dot gz gives us more information on it uh, we know that the .gz means uh, the gun zip compression algorithm. So in this case, data.gz is a compressed file, uh, compressed specifically using the gz uh, gun zip compression algorithm. Um, next is uh, purple, or that's kind of hot pink, more more hot pink than purple. Um, but that's going to be a media file. So your JPEGs or your, um, um, you know, I'm not sure if like a, if a .mp4 would be. Uh, Pink. I'm pretty sure it would be. I'm pretty sure the pink is uh, always for for media files. But typically, you don't store like you know, your your uh, three hour long Avengers rips uh, in Linux. So uh, you might you might have some some image data like if you're training a um, if you're training a, a neural net or something. So yeah, they would they would show up as as a pinkish hot hot pinkish. Um, next is blue. Uh, blue is going to be for directories, uh, aka folders. So um, when we made our directory, it, it was blue. Um, white is going to be for text files. Uh, so if it's, just, if it's just a plain text file that, that you've created, maybe it's got some output from a, from a um, um, some some application that you ran. It, it's just going to be a white file. So when you write a file, like uh, towards the end of this course, um, and like yeah, it's, it's going to be the last thing we do. We're going to write a, a small, quick little uh, bash script. We're going to write it, and it's going to be white at first, and then we're going to uh, modify its permissions to make it green and executable. Um, okay, so let's play around with changing directories real quick um so everybody should make sure that you're in your home directory um so you could use any of these three commands to return to your home directory so over here in the shell i'm going to control l clear my screen and then i'm going to say cd enter just to double check that i'm in my home directory okay um one second Okay, perfect. So um, we're in our home directory. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use a couple of the commands that we've learned right now to, to just make some directories, move into them, and, and move around just so we get more familiar with that. Uh, so once we're in our home directory, we're going to say um, mkdir, and I believe we're going to make it called, yeah, temp. So mkdir temp makes uh, a directory called temp in our home directory. And then without moving from our home directory, we're gonna say mkdir temp slash hg19, I believe, yeah. So the, the make directory command, the first one we ran, it made this temp directory. And now we're saying, okay, I want you to make the temp, uh, inside of the temp directory, I want you to make another directory called hg19. Okay, so now that we've got that directory made, let's go into uh, let's oops, let's move into um, the temp directory. So cd temp, just like we do with myder. And now let's print our work directory pwd. And you'll see that we've got um, home Dylan temp. And I believe we're going to move into HD19. Yep. So remember, change in directory CD, HG19. Let's run PWD one more time. And now we've got a longer, a longer little uh, path right here. So this tells us we're in the home directory. Specifically, we're in uh, your home directory. So it, it, mine's going to be Dylan. Yours is going to be your username. And then we're inside temp hg19. So we want to move back to our home directory, but we're going to see a new way to do that right now. So we are two directories down from our home. Um, so to move up a directory into our home, we're going to say cd and then we're going to say dot dot. 
So the dot dot in Linux means um, it's it's basically a, a, a relative pointer. Um, it's relative because uh, it always it changes depending on where you are, um, but it points to the directory above you. So our little prompt out here is telling us we're in HG19, which this output shows is right here. We're in HG19 right now. So if we were to type CD and then hit enter, it would take us up one directory into temp. Um, but we're not going to stop there. We're going to be more advanced. We're going to say CD dot dot slash dot dot. So CD dot dot slash dot dot moves us up one more, up a directory. And then uh, this slash says, after you get into that directory, do it again. So HG19, we're going to go to temp, and then we're going to go back to Dylan. So CD dot dot slash dot dot, hit enter. And we've got our little, our little home squiggly back right here. So we know we're in our home directory. Um, yep, let's just prove that with PWD. And we see home Dylan. So we, we've moved up two directories. And now let's pretend like, uh oh, we didn't want to move back to our home directory. We actually need to go back into the directory that we were just in. So to quickly get back to the last directory we were in, we can say CD and then the minus sign. So as if we're given a flag. Um, CD and the minus sign like this, the single dash, will take us back to the directory that we had just come from. Um, in our case, it's going to be two directories down, so we're going to move back to HG19. So I hit enter. And then this command also uh, gives us this output on, uh, by default because, uh, you know, uh, it's just to remind you uh, where you are because we're not moving, we're not just moving one directory now, we're moving multiple directories at a time. So it just gives us a little reminder. Um, and it says, we're in home, Dylan, temp HG19. So the, the minus uh, behaves like the back button on your web browser. It takes you back to where you previously were. Um, oh, perfect. OK. Hold on. I just got kicked out of. There we go. Sorry about that. OK. Um, so yeah, so that's what we wanted to learn here. We, we learned about the dot dot. The dot dot takes you up one directory. You can stack it with uh, with a slash. So dot dot slash dot dot takes you up two, and then the cd dash returns to your previous work directory. Okay, so now let's talk about paths real quick. Uh, this is probably the most complex thing we're going to talk about. So um, paths, uh, there's two kinds of paths: absolute and relative paths. So if you're in the project directory right here on this little uh, diagram. Um, your absolute path to where you're standing is going to be slash home slash Chris slash project. That's the absolute path pointing to where you're at. Um, the absolute path will never change. It'll always uh, it'll always start with, with with a slash, and it tells you from the top level directory uh, exactly where you are. Um, so the relative path is the path that changes, and it changes relative to where you're standing. Um, so again, we're pretending that we're standing uh, in home Chris project. So the relative path to this file right here, this readme file would be, um, so we have to go up a directory. So remember, since we have to go up a directory, it would, it would be um, dot dot. So the dot dot takes us right here. And then uh, once we're in this directory, we would say docs, because docs is inside Chris. And then now that we're inside docs, uh, we could see the readme. So um, the main difference between an absolute path and a relative path is that the relative path is going to change depending on where you're standing. Absolute paths are going to start with a slash, and they're going to tell you from the very top level directory where, uh, where whatever you're pointing at is. So the absolute path to the readme is going to be this right here, slash home, slash Chris, slash docs, slash readme. So you'll notice they both both point at the same uh, object. They're both pointing at README. Um, it's just how you how you uh, invoke them is slightly different. Um, when I was learning Linux for the first time, um, I would always use absolute paths um, because it's a lot easier to to point directly at what you're saying from the very top down. The the issue with using absolute paths is that they could get quite long um, as you start to have more directories. Um, this is a very simple example right here, but you could imagine that with more folders. Uh, and with more complex projects, um, the absolute path starts to get kind of crazy. Uh, but for learning Linux, using absolute paths is totally perfect, totally perfectly fine. That's exactly what I did. Um, so let's talk about the history of our commands. So all the commands that we enter into the uh, into the terminal, they get saved. So um, I'm going to move back to my home directory by saying cd. 
So I'm back in my home. Um, and so the two ways we can access our history is by using the, the first way is by using the, the keyboard. So on my keyboard, I can go up and down um, on my arrow keys. And this takes me through all the commands I've entered. So up, 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 gives me all these commands and down, 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 takes me all the way back to where I was, where, where I had not entered anything at all. Um, so if you wanna see a full list of the commands that you've entered, um, you use the history command. So right here I say history, and history is gonna show me um, uh, 1,045 entries of commands. That's a whole lot of commands. Um, the, the shell will remember all of your commands and it actually saves them to a file a hidden file in your home directory called um, bash history. Um, but um, you could access it just by saying history. Uh, whenever we close this shell, all of the commands we've entered from the time we've logged in will be um, saved to that bash history file. Um, but while you're in here, you could, you could view them using history. So uh, what we're gonna do right here is history shows us all of our history. If we just wanna see the last 10 commands, we're going to use the history command and then we're going to stack it with a operator um, specifically this pipe operator and then we're going to pipe it to the tail so what this does is these are two separate commands history and tail um, but exactly what this is doing is it's running the history command and then sending the output of the history command that's what this operator does it says i want to run this and send the output to this command um, the tail command just um, shows you the last 10 lines of, of whatever you give it. Um, so in our case, I'm gonna control L, clear my screen. And I'm gonna say history bar tail. And now instead of 10,045 um, entries, we get uh, 10, this being the latest 10, um, which is probably the most, the most uh, relevant to what we're doing, assuming we had just forgotten the command. Um, otherwise, you could just go up, 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 and, and find the command like that um, with, your, with your keyboard. Um, if you want to search your history, you do the same thing. So you say history, and then the bar, and then you say grep. Um, so real quick, uh, history, and then the bar, grep. Grep is another command which just searches. It's a regular expression search. So it's just going to search for whatever we tell it search for. I'm going to say um, search for git. Uh, so let's say I was using git at some point. So yeah, so here it, it shows all the instances of, of me um, using git. So I was cloning a whole bunch of stuff and switching a whole bunch of things. So all the times I've used git in my history shows right here. Um, or at least in the last 1,045 commands I've entered. Pretty useful. Um, okay, redirection operators, we're not really gonna touch on this. I just, wanted, I just want you guys to know that, that they exist. Um, Redirection operators uh, are, it, it redirects the output. So by default, whenever we enter a command, um, like we entered uh, ls, the output of this command is sent to the standard out. Um, tech, the technical term being std out. Um, std out by default is your, is your screen, is your terminal. Um, but if we didn't want the output to come here, let's say we wanted to send this output to a file, we would use one of these operators right here. So uh, you could redirect input, so you could send uh, input to a command, you could uh, redirect the output from the command that the command gives, um, and then you could append it uh, to add to a file, um, et cetera, like that. Um, this is kind of advanced stuff, I just want you guys to ignore that they, ex that they exist. This operator that we use right here, this, this pipe operator, the bar blah, symbol, um, that is a redirection operator, so you're already sort of familiar with them, um, but but these kind of go, these are, are more for like scripting and things like that. Um, okay, so now we're gonna talk about uh, um, scripting and then changing modifications. So um, this command right here, changing attributes, the chmod command, um, I actually don't know what chmod stands for. Um, change change modifications, I'm not sure. Um, but chmod um, is the command that, that you use um, to um, set permissions on a file. So we could change, uh, we could, uh, give or take away three kinds of permissions, read, write, or execute permissions. Um, in our case, we're gonna make a file, um, and this is gonna probably take the longest part of the course. It's gonna be the last thing we do because um, normally when we do this, we would use um, a graphical text editor called gedit, um, but 
because we're using the portal, the HPRC portal, um, we cannot use graphical user interfaces through the portal, um, through this shell access. So we're gonna have to use um, a text-based editor, um, and we're gonna use my favorite called Vim. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a text file uh, in Vim, and uh, we're gonna put this stuff in here. So the command you're gonna use is gonna be Vim, and this is what we're gonna say. Uh, I'll take this right over here. Um, first off, let me remove the script because I think I had it from yesterday. I did. I'm going to clear my screen and I'm going to say Vim, V I M. Now, Vim is a text, uh, text based text editor. So, whereas Notepad would open up a, a window that we would uh, interact with, Vim's going to be a text editor, but it's going to be 100% based in our, um, in our terminal right here. So, we're going to say Vim and then my underscore script dot sh. So this says, okay, open Vim, and when you open Vim, I want you to open a, I want you to create a file. Um, well, it's actually saying I want you to open a file called myscript.sh, but if the file does not exist, go ahead and create one. So the file does not exist right now. So we're gonna hit enter, and now we lose our little prompt, and this is what Vim looks like. So, um, so to add text to this file, we're gonna hit the I key. So up here, we're gonna say, uh, on my keyboard, I'm gonna hit I, and you'll notice down here in the bottom, this is gonna change. So watch, I hit I, and now I'm in insert mode. So insert mode in Vim lets us insert text. So the first thing we need to insert is gonna be, uh, well, the first line. So it's gonna be the shebang. The shebang is the, uh, the interpreter. So I said before the dot pi implied that we were uh, gonna interpret that file with Python. Um, the dot sh implies that this is a bash script. So this first line right here tells the system that when you interpret these commands, I want you to use the bash interpreter, specifically the bash interpreter found inside this file. So um, that's the real technical term. We're gonna say hashtag exclamation point slash bin slash bash and enter. That's the first line. And now the next line is gonna be uh, hashtag again. And uh, all of this that we're typing in right now, it's, uh, this is gonna be in bash. So bash in itself is a language. Um, it's, a, it's a scripting language uh, and hashtags um, or, or number symbols or whatever you wanna call them in, in bash are gonna be comments. So this is the comment right here. This is not gonna be interpreted. Uh, HPRC shell script. Um, closing Vim. So to close Vim after you've opened it like this, uh, to close it, you got to hit the escape key. So uh, this little this this little area down here is the uh, is kind of like the mode that you're in. So if I hit the escape key, um, I, I've just left insert mode, and now I'm gonna hit shift and then colon. I'm gonna hit shift colon. Now I'm in command mode. And the command to exit is gonna be Q. Q quits. Um, but if, we, if you quit, it's not gonna save what you wrote. So if you wanna save what you wrote and quit, you're gonna need WQ. WQ says uh, write quit. So the, uh, you hit enter and it takes you out of him. So, so the actual thing that you do would be colon to, or escape to leave. Um, so escape to leave. Um, insert mode and then colon to enter command mode and then WQ. There you go. Um, Vim, Vim, is, uh, Vim has a pretty steep learning curve, but that's basically how you use it. And once you master it, you'll look really cool. I promise you every time you use it, um, don't listen to anything anybody else says. So um, now that we have, uh, I've reopened Vim. I need to go into insert mode again. I'm gonna hit I. So now down here, I'm in insert mode and I'm gonna hit enter. Um, and we're gonna fill in the rest of the script. So the first line was the interpreter, and now we're gonna say my name equals uh, Dylan. So my underscore name equals open quotes, Dylan. So this, uh, if you're familiar with programming, might look familiar, what we're doing here is we're taking this value, in this case, Dylan, and we're storing this value into this variable, um, this variable being my name. So my name equals Dylan, stores Dylan into my name. Um, next, we're going to say uh, echo um, howdy, what was it? 
um, dollar sign my name. And I think we're gonna send that somewhere. Yeah, we're gonna send that to names.txt. Okay, so this line right here uses uh, two things. First, it uses echo. Echo is the repeat after me command. So uh, we're saying, okay, tell the system to uh, basically say, and then we're giving it some value. The value we're giving it is gonna be howdy, which is a, a constant value. And then this dollar sign right here, uh, anytime you see a dollar sign, it's a variable. So in this case, we're saying dollar sign my name. We just made my name right here. So howdy, and then the my name variable close the quotes because that's all we want it to do. And then this right here uh, from two slides ago is a redirect operator. So instead of sending this output to our terminal, we're gonna send this output to this file, um, names.txt. Uh, this single operator right here will, will overwrite this file entirely. So if this file exists, whatever was here before is gonna now be howdy my name. If this file does not exist, it'll create it. So that's why we're doing that. Um, the next line, um, uh, we're going to skip the next line because we didn't, we didn't create this myfavoritefoods.txt. So, um, let's scratch that. Um, so next we're going to, um, make a directory mkdir and name it script output. So we're familiar with this command, make directory script output. And then we're going to use MV. MV stands for move. So we're going to move names.txt, which is the file that's going to be created right here. And we're going to move that into this directory called script output. So script underscore output. And if you're following along, you, you'd realize that what we're doing is we're basically putting the commands that we typed into the terminal into a text file. Um, and then we're going to tell the system, hey, look, uh, execute these, these commands. Um, as bash commands. So all of these that we just did right now, you could enter all these into the terminal and they would be perfectly valid commands. In this case, we just want to run them at, well, um, you know, in, in one, in one, with one command, we want to do all of this stuff. Uh, and then it's gonna, it's gonna execute um, sequentially, so in order. Um, okay, so we move names.txt to script output. Now we're gonna CD into script output. And then the last thing we're gonna do is cat names.txt. So cat um, is the command to print the contents to the screen. So uh, we have a text file right here called names.txt. When we give it to cat, cat is just gonna open the file and it's gonna print all the contents. It's gonna read the file and print all the contents to the screen. It doesn't open it, it reads it. Um, so, um, whatever's in names.txt will be, will be printed to the screen. So once you've got all this stuff, um, and it looks good like this, uh, remember to exit Vim, we're gonna hit escape. So down here, I'm in insert mode. I'm gonna hit escape. Insert mode is gone. Now to enter command mode, uh, shift and then colon. I get my little colon right here and now Vim is waiting for a command and I'm gonna say, give it two commands, WQ, right quit and then enter. I promise you guys learning Vim is the coolest thing ever. Anytime you open a terminal, use Vim. It's very fun. Okay, so I'm gonna type ls, and uh, let's find that script file that we just wrote right now. Uh, my script.sh right here. So um, it's white, it's just a text file, we can't execute it. Um, we want to be able to run it. So to run it, we're going to say chmod. Remember the command to change the modifications of a file? So chmod, and now we want to, uh, we want to, for the user, um, so we're going to say u, which means uh, for the user, we want to add execute permissions. So u plus x, user being us, the, people, the person who created the file. For the user, we want to add, which is what the plus means, add, and then the X means execute permissions. So chmod u plus X, and then space my underscore script.sh. Hit enter. We don't see any complaints. Type ls again, 
And now we see our, our little script is green, which means it's good to go to execute. And we dot slash my underscore script dot sh. Dot slash in Linux means execute. So it's the equivalent of double clicking something. So you're on your Windows machine, you want to open up uh, Google Chrome, you double click on Google Chrome, and it, it, you double click on the icon of Google Chrome, and it, it runs. Um, dot slash in Linux means run this, execute this. So when I run this, let's see what we get. Um, okay, so for my case, uh, make directory had threw an error. It said script output already exists. Um, it exists because I, I ran this script yesterday. Um, you guys should have, uh, let me see, r minus r script output. And run it again. Okay, so it successfully ran. Howdy, Dylan. Was everybody able to get their script running? Did anybody have any uh, big, big issues with Vim? Uh, yes. Lisa has great taste. Vim is an amazing text editor. Okay, so that's basically Linux in a nutshell. We touched on very, very, the very basics of Linux. You log in with SSH. Um, in our case, you log, we logged in through uh, the portal, which started an SSH connection. Uh, we used the terminal, AKA the shell, uh, to interface with the system. Um, from the system, we, uh, we learned about making some directory commands. We learned about MKDIR for making directories, CD for moving around, um, and then RMDIR for um, removing directories. Uh, we talked about LS, LS being the command to list, um, to list the contents of files. Um, so the two commands that you'll probably use the most are gonna be CD and LS. Uh, PWD shows you where you are um, in the system. And then we talked about uh, attributes real briefly. Uh, the different colors mean that the files have different uh, meanings. They have different, um, they have different permissions on them. Uh, and then we real quickly went over Vim, uh, a text editor um, for, for manipulating files. So uh, we had one person who was not able to get their script running. I can stick around and help. Um, that's all I've got for this short little introduction to Linux. Um, for continued learning, we have uh, a couple options. We have the video tutorial series, um, which is specifically for like connecting to Ada and Terra and stuff like that. Uh, we also have our wiki page, uh, which is here. Um, hprc.tamer.edu slash wiki. Um, this has the wealth of all of our um, helpful information. Um, there's like quick start guides and stuff for using the clusters. Um, this is where I learned a lot of my Linux computing skills when I start, first started working here. Um, so I will stick around for questions. Um, um, okay, a couple questions. Um, Uh, how can I escape Vim? We'll start at the top. Uh, so again, to leave Vim, uh, I'm in my shell here, uh, right over here. I'm in my shell. I say Vim, um, Vim sum file, sum file. Oh, look, I already have, I already had uh, some file written. Um, so I want to leave Vim. I hit escape on my keyboard. I'm hitting escape right now. And then once I hit escape, I hit shift and then the colon. And now down here, I see I have a colon. This means I'm in command mode for Vim. And then I give it two commands, WQ for write and quit. If you just wanna, if you just wanna escape Vim and you don't wanna save anything, you can just say Q and then the exclamation point. This is gonna say, I wanna quit and I want you to force to quit. I don't care about saving anything, it's just gonna close it. Um, that also works. It won't save your work though. And then you hit enter and it leaves Vim. Um, will the slides be posted later? Yes, the slides. Uh, uh, so the slides for this. Uh, let me see. Where is HPRC? Okay, um, here on our website, our main page, hprc.tamu.edu, events, short courses. Braden just posted the link right now. Uh, link directly there. Um, events, short courses, and then details. View details right here for these primers, um, and then. These are the, uh, the introduction of Linux primer slides. Um, these use MOBA X term, um, but the content is the exact same. It's just the medium that we uh, used. Uh, for, for these slides, we use MOBA X term. For right here, we used uh, the, sh uh, the shell from the HPRC portal. Um, and then Nadia asked, uh, can I go 
back and edit the .sh file? Yes, you can. Um, so using Vim or whatever text editor, in our case, we're using Vim, you just say Vim and then the name of the file. My script .sh. And it, it's going to open the file. And then you make, you make what you remember, press I to go into insert mode. Down here, I, I see I'm in insert mode, so I can add whatever text I want to it. Um, and then I hit escape. I've left insert mode, shift colon, I'm in command mode, WQ, right quit. Enter. So yeah, Marina's posted the link to our YouTube channel. Um, that is where these, uh, the recorded primers will go. Um, like I said, we, we've done this introduction to Linux one a few times, so I'm not sure which one's gonna get posted, but we do have to do like closed captioning and stuff, uh, closed captioning um, and things like that for the, um, for, for the recorded ones, uh, which, which can take a little while. So, uh, but they will be posted there. You can also find that link on the primers pop-up page that uh, Braden posted down here at the bottom of YouTube playlist. Open this link and then boom. Yep, that's the last slide. Um, so yeah, to exit the show, you just you can just close it out. Close the, uh, in our case, we're using a web browser, so you just, right here, boom. Um, would I recommend using MobileX term or the shell? Um, so MobileX term uses uses the shell. Uh, MobileX term connects to the shell. Um, they're just different. They're different interfaces for for interfacing with with the the terminal the terminal shell. Um, if you, uh, I I would recommend using whatever you're more comfortable with. Um, I I don't really use the portal too much because I have my I just have my terminal, so I can just always open my terminal and then SSH from here. Um, it kind of depends on, on what operating system you're using. If you're using uh, Windows, um, it might be easier to use Moba Xterm. Um, that way you could always, uh, Moba Xterm is always going to be available on Windows. The shell from the HPRC portal that we're using right now is going to be available wherever you are because all you need to be able to access this is a web browser. And, and you know, most, most computing devices can't have, can use a web browser. So. Um, I would say this one is probably more bare bones uh, than, than Moba Xterm because Moba Xterm does have some built in features on top of it, like file transfers and things like that, um, that are just easier to, to, to use like uh, natively. Um, so it's more of a preference. Um, yeah, no problem. No problem.